In this video, we're going to take an overview look at our learning module on the Firebase Database, Advanced Autocomplete Text View, and Swipe Gestures. This is one of my favorite learning modules because, for one, we're seeing how we can use some Android components to reduce the number of clicks and reduce the number of screens on our application. For example, Autocomplete Text View. This is the Live Plant Places app I have it running in the debugger. And you see if I start typing Eastern, it will start auto-completing, but we know that there are several plants called Eastern, or that have Eastern in the name. So if I choose Eastern Redbud, how do I know what plant I actually chose? That's number one. You see, I can tab off, I can type in a location, I can do some other things. Now, on the other hand, I might come up with my own plant. Let's say Circus, um, we'll, we'll just say Circus Americanensis, which is a made-up tree. So we'll say American. And we'll say uh, glory, and then we'll say American redbud. So again, totally made up. Now, how do I know that this is a made-up tree? How do I know that this is something that's not already in the, that autocomplete? You see, I go to location, and what's interesting is it comes up and it pops up a new screen where I can enter a new plant. So how does it know to pop up that new screen here where it didn't know to pop up that new screen when I entered a plant that was already in that dropdown? Uh, that's one thing we're going to take a look at. Think about how this would have been done another way. Uh, if we go back a few years and think about older user experience, we might have one search screen with a search term. We might hit search on that search screen, and then that will take us to another screen, which is the search results screen. We might pick a result from that search results screen, and then it might come back here to this screen. That's if we're selecting a plant that already exists. If we need a new plant, we'd maybe need a button that says add a new plant. You see, all of those extra screens, all of those extra buttons aren't so much needed if we can be smart about doing our autocomplete text. Now, why autocomplete text? It's a lot easier to manage if we have a whole lot of data than using a dropdown. Right now, there are 5,000 different genus, species, cultivar combinations that are in this autocomplete. Imagine if that were a dropdown or a series of radio buttons. It would complicate the user's view. So that's one thing that we're going to take a look at in this, in this video series. We're also going to take a look at swipe gestures, which is how we can use swipes to make certain things happen in our application. We could have maybe a swipe left to save or a swipe right to see a previous item. Swipe up, swipe down, those can do different behaviors. And so swipes are a good way to replace what used to be buttons on a traditional application. Once again, the fewer widgets we have on the screen, the better. So those are a couple videos we're going to hit. We're going to start, though, with one other su subject. We're going to start with the Firebase database. And the Firebase database allows us to persist our information into the cloud. And it also gives very fast replication across devices so that a device can be notified when the data on the cloud has changed. And it can take some action based on that behavior. This is something we're seeing a lot more of today, this concept of being able to be event driven, where the event might be updating some data. So some really neat things we're going to look at. Let's start by looking at our Scrummy board. Now, I realized a couple of things. I realized I mistakenly moved over a story called Determine Which Plant the User Selected from an Autocomplete. I did that in a previous, uh, a previous intro video. We're actually going to do that this week. So let's go ahead and move that to done. Implement swipe gestures. Yeah, we're going to do that this week. Let's go ahead and move that to done. Capture an image of a plant. One other thing I realized, I sh the one story I, sh I moved over and I didn't mean to was that autocomplete. This is one I meant to move over and I didn't. If we go back to our learning module on uh, implicit and implicit intents, we had a video here, get image from Android camera with implicit intent and butter knife. That one actually already took care of these uh, sprint tasks. So I'm going to go ahead and move them to complete. One other thing that we know we'll do is we're going to save our specimen to Firebase. So I added a couple of sprint tasks here that I didn't have before. I already had the create Firebase database. I didn't have the persist data to Firebase database or receive notification changes to Firebase database. We're going to do each of those in this learning module. So let's go ahead and move them over. And if you take a look, holy smokes, we have nothing in to do, which means 
it's probably the end of the sprint and we've probably uh, at the end of this lecture will have completed everything that we need for this sprint and sure enough that's the case it is the end of sprint two so if we take a look at our learning module we'll see down towards the bottom we have our normal quiz question suggestions and we have our quiz we also have a retrospective due this week which is where we pause and look back at our development efforts and decide what went well what should we stop doing that didn't go so well and what can we start doing to be a bit more productive so this week is end of sprint which means guess what next week then is code review due it probably feels like you just did them a couple weeks ago and if so that is true so for the code review for round two you may stick with the same group you, rev you reviewed in the first code review session, or you can pick another group. You just can't code review your own group. That's all. So have a look. Look for a group that will be good for code review. So in our learning module, we're going to take a look at populating a DTO with Butterknife, then overview of Firebase and add to build.gradle. We'll likely see more on Firebase uh, even after this learning module. There's a lot of neat stuff that Firebase can do like cloud storage and also uh, single sign-on or authentication. So we won't look at cloud storage or single sign-on in this learning module. This learning module is just the database. Um, but nonetheless, there's much more you can do with Firebase. Save DTO data to Firebase and then get notification of changes in Firebase on Android. One thing I like about these videos, if you look at all of these together, it's probably less than an hour of lecture. In the days before Firebase, we could do the same behavior, but we had to do it manually. And it used to take me three entire lectures to get through how to do it all manually. So you see what used to take a long time now can be done much more easily with Firebase. And that means we have more time to explore other things. So lots of exciting things going on. Get an object ID and auto, uh, from an autocomplete text view. That means when a user selects the text, we're not so concerned about the text itself. We want to know the unique identifier of the object that the user selected. In other words, the object that produced that text. That's what we're interested in. How to tell if a user enters new text in an autocomplete text view. So how do we know if a user types in something that didn't exist there before? And maybe we can take some behavior based on that. And then gestures. So implementing our swipe up, swipe down, left, right, and on fling in Android. And we know that we can use these gestures to uh, could possibly be a second way of doing something that's already on a button or even better. Maybe we can use the gestures to get rid of several buttons entirely and then we'll have an easier to use application. Think about refresh. Long ago, refresh, maybe you'd press a button that says refresh, but now think about it. It's second nature when you're in an application to drag down and the application refreshes. Think about Facebook, LinkedIn, or any of those applications where you simply swipe down and the app refreshes. At first you would have thought that needed a button, but now it's a behavior that's common that everybody's used to, thus, one less button that we need on our user interface. Really neat stuff. So really nice learning module. Uh, I had a lot of fun creating it and I'm sure you'll also enjoy uh, being a part of it. Thank you.